Hi, what I want to show you today is a technique that I've developed to help people loosen up. I'm really glad you're behind the screen today because you might need to be. I hope the cameraman's wearing a raincoat. He might need that. When we start working with watercolour and then particularly with pastel, I find that students frequently tighten up. The more work they do, and particularly if they're anxious about the work they're doing in a group setting, they will tighten up. So this is an exercise that I encourage people to try. And it's really just no more than a 10-minute exercise, which you could do at the beginning of a painting session yourself. It's particularly good if you've got a lot of watercolours that, let's say, didn't turn out quite as well as you might have hoped, and you want to go back into them, explore where you could have improved them. And sometimes you may find you end up with a painting that you like and could frame and hopefully sell. So here I've got a, a, a photograph of a child on a beach. It's a, a scene that I know well. It's a child on a beach on the south coast of the Isle of Wight. Bright sunshine, middle of the summer, child with buckets, lots of energy, lots of light, lots of life. So the technique suits that because it's about capturing life and energy. No more, let's paint. I'm going to start by putting in some general watercolour. Now you'll see that the technique here is as loose and as free as I can make it. It is not precision painting. It is about getting a sense and a feel, an impression of that day, of that light, and of those moments. And remember, the watercolour is not the end of the process. So if it doesn't go exactly where you want it to go, don't worry. You're going to go back into it with pastel later. I'm going right over the figure. I'm going right over all kinds of areas here because there's pastel to go on. A bit more in there, I think. And we'll just warm the front here with a little bit of raw umber just to give it a sense of a beach. OK, so we've got a sense of some waves. We've got a sense of some water in the background. Let's do a little bit with the figure as well. We've got this lovely, lovely, lovely sun hat. You'll see that um, working vertically with watercolour is also quite fun if you want to loosen up, because it does mean things will run. I don't mind that so much, as I say, because I will be working over it. And the whole process of this is about loosening up enjoying. As long as you don't splash the person next to you, you'll probably be all right. And uh, we're just getting some tonal work in here and some underwash colour. And again, don't worry, it's not the finished painting. Quite often, and interestingly, people who've worked with watercolour for some time and say to me they would like to loosen up, will start a process like this and then like the watercolour enough to finish it as a watercolour because they are keen and interested and wishing to have this very loose approach. So maybe a little bit more. Uh, I'm working here with raw colour. I'm not doing any mixing because there's mixing going on on the paper and there's mixing going on as it drips and falls and there's mixing because I'm putting paint on top of paint so it's mixing actually on the paper. Let's just darken this a little bit more. Some raw sienna going in there, which is quite nice for this um, figure and the orange underneath. OK, a little bit darker in the hat. Bit of uh, indigo going in here, just to darken that hat area. Remember, light, life, energy is all important. And at this point, I need to dry this off and take off the masking fluid. Little bits of masking fluid I put on just to register where the drawing is underneath. OK, so the, just for reference, the paper that I've used is just SAA practice watercolour paper, rough. The rough is important to give you enough tooth, but when you start working with the pastels, a couple of things to remember. Most important thing to remember before you put any pastel on the paper at all, and my crew will now help me, is... Masking fluid. OK, thank you for that. So we take the masking fluid off. And in some ways, putting a bit of masking fluid on there just helps me to remember where the drawing has got a bit tricky and I just need a little bit of reference there. 
about that drawing. Having got to this stage, the other thing to remember is this will not take 14 layers of pastel. You're going to work with the pastel in a direct way. You're going to make marks on there. We're not doing little tiny sketch marks. We're doing big, bold marks because that's the energy. And the energy of this scene is where we want to capture the light and that sea, light and energy. So we'll start with the hat. You'll see that I haven't got an enormous number of pastels here. You only need a few. If you're going to look at the watercolors that you normally do and you know your normal palette for watercolor, honestly, you only need a limited range of pastels, tonally similar, color similar to the watercolor set that you would normally use. Typically, about 24 to 30 pastels is plenty. Also works really well with pastel pencil if you've got pastel pencils and you're thinking about using those in a similar way. So let's just work with this hat. Now, I've got a little bit of um, purple in here. And the reason I've got that purple is that the light, because it's so intense, is actually coming through the sides of this hat, where it's reflected back off the seat. Very intense light in this kind of setting. And we're going to just work over this. Now, where I'm working over the underpainting, the underpainting will always come through. It will always shine through. And I want that. The texture of the paper, the way the, the watercolour sits in all the hollows of the watercolour paper is important. What I'm doing is I'm layering paint on top of the paper, on top of the, the bumpy bits of the paper, not in the hollows where the watercolour is. So, just quickly, gestural marks, just quick marks in there. Almost the same colour as the underpainting, but slightly, slightly different. Now, because I haven't got an enormous amount of tooth on this paper, I'm then Again, just using one color and coming down there. Preserving the light. Preserving the light against this slightly darker wash that I put on earlier. Now, you'll notice here we've got a nice purple splodge which came out of the freeway in which the watercolor went on. It's not a necessary a problem because all you need to do is to find a pastel which is similar in color to that background. And I can reinstate that edge in there. So it's a magic way of working. I can work back into the background, I can work on the foreground, but I cannot put on many layers of pastel. So we'll leave the hat there for the moment. It's not finished, but it's there somewhere. We'll get into the, uh, the actual flesh tones. Really strong sunlight, backlit, so I'm going right in there with a really dark, strong colored pastel. And then the same down this side. You remember what I said about working with speed and gesture, not with detail. So we're going to work fairly quickly now. I just want some light and color coming through here, which picks up some of the reflected light off this um, little swimsuit. Swimsuit itself, interestingly, I'm going to use a really dark red through there just to catch the tone. It's about tone. My students tell me that that's my favorite word is tone. Very often, people paint with color, and they're happy working with color, and they forget about the tone and how important tone is. So back down here now, remember, this is just quick study, just catching the legs and the movement of this little body. We've got a little bit of light on there, so I'm just going to leave some bits there. We can now catch this, reinstate the drawing again just by doing that. Uh, we're almost there. A really important part of a beach scene is the shadow. If you don't get that shadow in there, then there is the sense that the figure is floating, disconnected to the earth. And that really isn't good when there's so much water around. So we've got that shadow in. Uh, quickly, the buckets. I'm quite happy with the, um, the color of the bucket and the light on the bucket. But what I'm going to do is just suggest some shadow area in that bucket there, a little bit through there. And frankly, there's not a lot more other than cleaning up where the drawings got covered with um, the watercolor in here that I want to do to that. That's it. It's capturing that moment and capturing it simply, quickly, and as much freedom and energy as you can impart. If you're going to do this over two hours, you're going to need some energy drinks. Quick, energetic, finish. <laughs>